This is when uh, situations can get pretty hairy when the fish run along the shoreline when you have more than a couple rods in the water. Oops, excuse me. Need some help there, Lewis? Yeah. <laughs> he gets into that net, he don't like that too much. No, no, it's, you gotta have a, a big net. Mm -hmm. Keep him calm and it's about an average size for for this lake. We'll just uh, pull out of the water and place it on the mat over here. Now the, the mat, the, we got a lot of rocks here, I know that. Now yeah, why do you use the mat? The mat is good because uh, you know, carp can be pretty lively when they're on the bank, as you can see right there. Yep, I can see that. <laughs> and uh, basically the mat you can help, helps you keep them under control mm -hmm. and also keeps them from hurting themselves too much on the rocks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's good. You can kind of just like flip it over and control them with oh. the mat. It makes it really easy to pop the hook out. That little little hook just barely pops out really yeah, easy out of just, there. Just amazing how <sighs> as soon as you took that mat off he, he flipped again. Yep. Yeah. One good thing you can do is if you keep their eyes covered, that tends to keep them pretty calm. So let's we'll get this flip it out. That's a nice carp. Yes. It's about maybe eight, nine pounds, something somewhere right around there. The ones this size this size to about fifteen pounds, they tend to be the hardest fighters. Off to grow bigger. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. This is Delaware Valley Outdoors. We're carp fishing. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> Murray's Delaware Valley Outdoors. I'm in central Pennsylvania with my good friend Lewis from the Fish Guys from Delaware Valley Outdoors. And Lewis says, Bob, let's do some summer carp fishing. We had a fantastic show, uh, what, two winters ago or whatever it was, on the uh, Schuylkill. Mm -hmm. And so now we're back up here. And where exactly are we, Lewis? Uh, this is Gifford Pinchot State Park. Uh, we're in York County. Uh, it's a little bit south of Harrisburg. It's a uh, pretty typical uh, Pennsylvania impoundment. It's a great carp lake. Yeah, and uh, you got camping here with mm -hmm. uh, the tent camping, but you have uh, trailer camping, you have cabins. That's a great place. We'll put all that information up on the website later on. All right, we just caught a carp, and Lewis is going to put out another bait for us. So, Lewis, go ahead and do that, and then uh, all right. we'll talk. Right, I'm with Matt, the other fish guy from Delaware Valley Outdoors. Matt, we just had a, a, a carp run towards us, a small carp, but yep, little guy. Uh, and we, we lost them. But now we have to rebait. Now, you right. have a different bait you're throwing today. Right. Uh, tell us about what you have here. Well, actually, the, the mixture inside here, which is uh, it's a mixture of like corn and other kind of grains that I have, it's, it's also just mixed up with the animal food pellets. Mm -hmm. So basically the moisture from the corn kind of helps crumble the pellets a little bit and I'll, I'll also be putting it in uh, a PVA bag just like Lewis did mm -hmm. but it's a different type of PVA bag and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. What we have here is actually PVA mesh and so basically it's like a sock that's fitted over a tube and what you do is you take a handful of the bait 
fill the tube up with the crumble and all the particles and everything. And you have a, a plunger stick, you press in there, you pack it really tight so it's a really, really tight ball of food. Pop it out. Put a knot in the cotton. Tie it off. Uh -huh. And then just uh, you know tie another knot back on there so it's ready to go for. It's the, like almost making sauce like a sausage. It's exactly what it's just like making a sausage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I'll do next is I'll take my my stringer needle. I'll place the needle all the way through the length of the the of the the mesh stick, and then uh, take my. You want to just hold the rod. Mm -hmm. So what I'll use on my swivel is actually a quick change swivel, so I can pop it off really quick. Just hold that too, thanks. And uh, my leader has a little loop tied on to the end of it, so I can just hook that on the needle, bring my line back through the bag, and then fix that up, have my bait sticking out the bottom end, and this covers up the whole line. One of the really great things about this tactic is that you'll never get tangled. It's always, it's always perfect, you know, because if you didn't have anything on the line, your hook could get caught on the, the line or on the weight. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll cast this out there and, and hopefully uh, get something with it. All right, let's get that bait out. All right. <laughs> Exactly. What kind of bait were you using? And, and tell us about this, the, uh, the two pieces that you have here. Okay. Well, uh, what I cast out as bait was mostly corn. Mm -hmm. um, what you have here is uh, two different man manifestations of a material called PVA. Uh, that stands for polyvinyl alcohol. Uh, basically, uh, this is a film, and this is like a little foam that uh, they both break down in the water, similar to like a breath mint strip you may have seen or something of that nature um, and you can fill this up with uh, any kind of bait you want and attach it somewhere on your rig and when it hits the bottom it dissolves very quickly you know 15 to 30 seconds and then you have a great presentation you know like carp fishing like all kinds of fishing really a good presentation is what you're after so mm -hmm. um, the way I, I prefer to use these bags I actually use a half of one um, and I fill them with a mixture of uh, corn, carp love corn, and a couple different kinds of animal feed pellets, some breadcrumbs. The idea, idea here is you get a, things of a lot of different consistency. Some float and most of them sink. So when this hits the bottom and it opens, uh, since we're fishing in a lake here, mm -hmm. you don't have a current as much as you do in a river to attract the fish to you, allow them to smell what you've got. So mm -hmm. the floating pellets go up to the top and the, the wind will blow them around and you'll create actually like a like a scent trail that goes back to your bait. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I attach it is you can actually lick this stuff and stick it to itself like an envelope any, any way you want. It's a really versatile material. So they can carp. True carp fishermen. Yeah. So now I have this, this bag is totally sealed. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, food in here. And the way I like to attach it is I uh, fold it across like this and seal the two sides together. That's amazing stuff. That's great, yeah. Um, and then I do one last thing. Something can happen when you use PVA. The one pitfall of it is uh, the first couple times I use it, every so often, you get a piece of corn that actually sticks onto the point of your hook. And, you know, you might be sitting around <laughs> waiting for a fish to come for an hour or two, you know, sometimes even a lot longer than that. You put out a rod and go to sleep, you know, mm -hmm. take a nap or something. And you reel in much later to realize that, like, you know, your hook point's been covered up and you haven't caught a fish as a result. So. Um, you can take one of these nuggets and the same thing, you lick and stick it, you push it in here and then fold it over and that covers up your hook point. So it's totally protected, uh, great anti-tangle mechanism and there's my complete rig. Uh, this whole thing will sink very slowly and just sit on the bottom and it will burst open and be a perfect presentation. And then it just opens up and then that cloud of all that exactly, stuff. Exactly, exactly. Some of the pellets will float mm -hmm. up and it will make a nice little 